Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Let us start this lecture with a thought process. Tough time does not last forever, but it makes you tougher forever. So, do not get shy away from tough time. Fight with yourself so that you will be tougher. So, uh, uh, before starting, let us uh, recapitulate what we learned in the last lecture. We basically looked at uh, various aspects of the physics like your optics and other things and the later on I moved to the chemistry part how it was and then we looked at also little bit about uh, uh, what we call like games like Ludo and then what we call Pachisi and then um, your um, snake and ladders and other things and then we also discuss about uh, what we call um, other aspects of the, uh, I mean other arts form various things and then we moved into also the how we can utilize the ancient technology of making roof in place of concrete or the RCC, reinforced concrete roof kind of things. Let us now uh, discuss about what you call problems with the modern agricultural farming because we will be discussing about agriculture. Agriculture is very important for the food as our ancestor says anne patista deva that means we need to have a food even for the God you know to exist. So, therefore, it is important and artificial fertilizers we are using and so are the herbicide which is spoiling the soil and polluting the rivers, lakes and water resources. In the name of growing more we are doing that. And we are, you know, uh, as a result, the soils with a low organic matter content we are having and it became infertile and our body is getting diseases and we are depending too much on the fertilizer. As a result, if you look at our uh, farmers are committing suicide because they are in dead trap. Of course, we are trying to propagate a zero budget, you know, farming and which was there earlier in our country. Okay. We should do that and it is integrated with that. Our ancestors were very aware how to do farming, but we do not know because of utilization of modern science and technology driven by the market forces. And a greater amount of fertilizers uh, needed year after year to produce same yield of crop. For example, let us say 10 years back for acre, they are putting let us say 10 kg of urea, but today you will have to produce at least give something. Uh, maybe uh, 30 kgs, then you know cost is increasing and uh, the soil is getting spoiled. So, as uh, we are using also pesticides because the ecosystem is being spoiled because of that and there is the imbalance because there is a pest and prey kind of things which will be balancing each other. So, artificial pesticide what we are will stay on the soil for longer time enter into our food chain and then we get disease. Artificial chemical destroy the soil microorganism. This modern people have not understood there is a lot of microorganism which are working for that to be you know nature works on that. Even in our body it is there, even on the surface of your skin it is there. So, we should not destroy it. they are the part of the nature they are doing the lot of work which we do not know understand. No, <coughs> of course, the modern science has started realizing this. But our ancestors were might be aware they were in the balance that is the thing key what they have talked about it. Uh, as a result this destruction of the soil microorganism, the poor soil structures and aeration problem there is a decreasing of nutrient availabilities. As I was telling pests and diseases became more difficult to control as they becoming resistant to the artificial pesticide because you pesticide put and they get resist you know <laughs> resistance. So, that you go for a higher level of chemicals to have that effect. 
then you know you are spoiling the whole soil, water, air and your body and then. So, as a result the habitat loss also is going on. So, which is a very important therefore, whole system we are in deep trouble in the name of what development <laughs> right and people are making money and we are in trouble. So, this is not the uh, way we should do. Then what is the solution? Solution is basically go back to the farming the our ancestors are doing, but you need to do research in such a way that you will have to handle the present situation, because you have spoiled now. Now, you will have to get back to the earlier thing is also not that easy, <laughs> right. Is it like that you have already put an arrow and then you will have to take it back and it will go and hit. So, it is a difficult dicey situation one has to handle therefore, you need to. Of course, this farming has now come up from the western name is an organic farming. In India, we call it as a prakritic krishi or the natural farming, which was very much there. And this is organic farming you lay as old as in Indian civilization, because ours is a agriculture country. Even today, 75 of our populations are rely on the agriculture as a you know enterprise. So, it is the process of farming developed and processed by our ancestors, but we lost it and then you know we are now using their technology, they is being modified is coming now the organic fru, uh, food whatever available in malls and other thing much costlier than the when you are using the uh, what you call uh, artificial fertilizers and pesticide and herbicides. So, what is this? <laughs> this is nothing but a mere business you know we are spoiling. So, therefore, we are working on that uh, zero budget case a lot of people are working I think some of you should look at and some IITNs after leaving the jobs they are doing that now in some pockets of India in the interiors I am having some uh, you know contact with them. They have left the job they are doing because they find this is more you know interesting and then uh, uh, what you call satisfying. The British survey of 2000 village of Chengalapattu in Tamil Nadu in 1760 to 1766. You know data says that yielding was around 12 tons of paddy per hectare, which is much higher than the whatever the urea or whatever the artificial fertilizer you use. It is the process of cultivation that organic farming or the natural farming what we call is basically work in harmony with the nature unlike modern farming that works against their mother nature. So, that is the important aspect which I am harping on this course that science and technology should be aligned with the plans and programs of the mother nature than that of going against it. That is the basic philosophy one has to put it, which is modern science and technology is unable to understand and that is why all problems are coming. Sci modern science is trying to solve one problem, but creating a another 100 problems which cannot be solved, right. So, that is not the way. Way is that you understand plan and programs are the thing align with that, so that things will be very natural. So, this process helps to achieve good crop yield without harming the natural environment habitats. When you talk about it is man, animals, insect, microorganisms, plants, air, water all together. It is not that you will you know look at in a it is a holistic approach, the whole approach is not the part. It is not that you know like uh, what do you call, it would not be the what you call divisive kind of thing, right. Reductionist is not that you reduce the thing and then you look at it in a whole that is the main problem things. So, you can look at this data what I gave you particularly this 12 ton and 2000, you can look at Anna Bahu uh, Kurivita by J K Ra Baja and M D Sinewa, they are having center for policy studies I have taken from this you know website this data. They have done some research there for the indigenous knowledge system. So, I will just give you some data <coughs> about the quality of food, because quality of food is important for the health. And if you look at these are basically vegetables like you know snap beans, cabbage, lettuce, tomatoes and spinach. And this is minerals what it will be containing calcium, magnesium, potassium, sodium, manganese, iron and copper. This data I have taken from the uh, research conducted by Firman MBS and Rajar University Natural Gardener Catalan. If you look at this is there is a uh, term if you look at one is organic right. 
and other is conventional. Okay. Conventional means the with urea, with your pota potas or any other chemicals you are using. That is the traditional, okay, conventional. Organic means where you won't be using you using natural thing. Okay, are you getting my point? So now, if you look at, let's say, uh, iron in the tomatoes, if we use organic, which is natural farming, what our ancestors were doing, you will get one nine three eight milli equivalence. You know what is milli equivalent? The one thousandth of a grams in a some kind of things. You know, like very small quantities of a one liter or some kind of units for the saying that oh, what is the thing. And this is one. So, you know that iron is very essential for the what? For our body. All minerals are you know some way it is equal. So, similarly, if you look at uh, spinach or any other things, it is like that. If you look at sodium, let us say, this is 6.50 and it is 0. And this is spinach 69.5 and this. What I am trying to say with this data that look, if you do that, it is having a higher level of the minerals which are required for the, for our body. We need not to take some vitamin tablets, you know, like for a, a supplement. So, it is important and why it is so, I can, I could have shown you maybe in agriculture when I talk about it, I now remember, I will show you what will be the root size when you do naturally and what will be the root size when you do with, with the artificial uh, fertilizers. So, that question will answer. Let us now look at irrigation systems. Uh, if you look at the irrigation, you might be aware the introduction, you know the Grand Anicut, which is in Cavari river, which is quite old, you know like something 2000 year old and on. There is a river, river Colidum and river Cavari, they mix together here and there is a, you know at the confluence, at the out downstream of confluence, there is a Anicut, which was being made in the Chola kingdom, which is very old. And this area irrigated by ancient irrigation network, you know, is about something 69,000 acres of land at the time. But after that, uh, there is a modification around since this is now around 1 million acres is an increase. Okay. And this is a very old dam. And most of that dam, if you look at having problems, you know what are the problems in the modern dams, what being made by our modern engineers? Any idea? Silting, silting is a big problem, okay, <laughs> and that is hardly maybe seventy years, eighty years. These are two thousand years. Sir, uh, so can you please mention uh, the date of this Grand Anicut? We, uh, it is something around uh, two thousand years back. I will we'll be discussing about this when I will be talking about irrigation system, okay. So <coughs> this Anicut was in uh, you know need to be maintained, and there is a renovation work done by the uh, British engineers in 1838 and they were finding lot of problems with that, they could not manage well. And then what they did, they uh, had a dialogue with the local people, which at the time you know, and they, they could get the solution. They were very unsuccessful in the beginning to handle this one. They were thinking they can do because they were great engineers. Okay. And then they learned from the local people that is something 1874 latter cotton who paid tribute to these people, native Indians who had instrumental in imparting the knowledge for making this uh, success, reno, successful renovation of this grand anicut. What he says? He says that it was from them, the native Indians. We learned how to secure a foundation in loose sand of unmeasured depth. Are we ready to learn from them now? No, no. They had learned. <laughs> he is saying 18, 1874 when we are under them. And in fact, what we learned from them made the difference between financial success and failure. They were, you know, always saying that we are putting money, we are not getting back. But this local native people taught them how to do that. 
for the Madras river irrigation executed by our engineers have been from the first greatest financial success of any engineer who works in the world. But we are not taking care of local knowledge or the indigenous knowledge, they had taken care. So, only because we learned from them with this lesson about foundation, we built bridges. After learning that from the native people, they learned how to build bridges, wares, aqueducts and every kind of hydraulic work and it goes on. We are thus deeply indebted to the native engineers. Where are these native engineers? Let me tell you, it is also some of them are coming up, some of the people are working, we are not working. They have revived a river, the village people which was dead. I will be talking about that when I will go to irrigation system. It is not, do not think that you people know the engineering, okay? the people who are uh, in the villager, uneducated, they do not know. They know because I told you science is nothing but a common sense at the best. They are having better common sense than uh, all of us. So, therefore, we should not look down upon them, rather work with them and learn from them what we need. So, this is about a Natras temple. Can you see that? It is very intricate. How we can make it? What, what are the method I need to do? You all of you are engineers, tell me. Casting, what kind of casting? How many castings you are aware? What kind of casting it will be? And they had done long time back, okay. It goes back to the uh, what you call uh, even Harappan, no, no, I think later on, okay. This is known as lost wax casting and this casting was being used, right, for making this intricate shape, right. And this is made of five metal uh, which is known as pancha dhatu is nothing but alloy, people were knowing the alloys. And uh, the metal uh, crafting had started in South India during 6th to 9th century, what you call C that is common era, but before that it was there also and they are mastered by the Pallava dynasty. And this method is basically known as the investment or the last was casting method and which is being used today for casting of turbine blades, okay. And our ancestors did not do that for turbine blades, they were doing for idols for other things. And this is about sun temple in Konark in Odisha built by Ganga dynasty around 1250 CE. And if you look at it, it is one of the wonders in the world that is known as black pagoda. And how was it built? Was it built without any engineering? Engineering was there or not? Right? But where those engineers have gone? Do we recognize them? Do we teach this thing how to do? Do we know how to maintain our temple? Do we know how to repair and you know maintain existing temples? No, no. So, we need to do that because the number of temples in India is so large, it is impossible to believe that we are created without any sound technologies. Because the king Choda Ganga, he spent 12 years of his savings of the whole kingdom for making a temple like this. Do you think that he will give money unless he was having faith in the technology? If I want to give 500 rupees to anybody, I will think several times whether he can deliver me or not, right? And he was a king. <laughs> so, therefore, it was there. And what technology did ancient people in India possess that made so many of this structure possible, you know, we lost it. But we can revive it, we can study it, there might be some scripture somewhere. So, it is important because these temples are living till they existing and we are using it, we should learn it and how to maintain it. So, if you look at the Kedarna temple and uh, it is a temple of something 2000 years people claims and before flash flood this temple was like that, you know all are the new structures, right? After the flash flood, what is there? This temple is, wh where are the new structures? Gone with the flash flood. Why? People say it is a miracle. I told no, it is a technology. 
what our ancestors had built, right? So, I mean, people were having that, and then we need to look at it. Similarly, if you look at Pasupati uh, Nath Temple, and which was a you know built around 11th century C and renovated in 17th century, and this was the temple which is a lot of in a pagoda base, and we know that. Uh, this is a height of 23 meters and 7 centimeters from the base of the pinnacle. It is a very you know long temple. And so, if you look at this is temple, lot of structures were there. And uh, the earthquake you know it is a richer scale of something around 7.8 or something. I am not remembering exactly. It is a very high. But what happened? The temple is remaining. <laughs> you know rest of the things have gone. That means, it is the technology that is important. So, therefore, we need to study that and the technologies and therefore, let me tell you that what Judge Bernard Shaw has told. He says that Indian way of life provides the vision of natural real way of life, but today we do not have that life. We veil ourselves with unnatural mask. Today, you know, he is saying that they are veiling their unnatural, uh, you know, their cover their, you know, mind or the body, you know, like consciousness with unnatural mask. We are also doing. And on the face of the India, a tender expression which can carry the mark of the Creator's hand. If you lead a natural, balanced life, integrating with the mother nature, you can know a lot of what you call intuitive knowledge from the mother nature and you can do better science and engineering. That is that I can interpret in that, am I right? My in interpretation? Yes. So, <coughs> let me, moral of the story, I would like to say that we need to relook, <coughs> revive, rejuvenate for the renaissance of our scientific culture and heritage of glorious mother land that is Bharat what we call in modern time India. So, with this we will stop over here and we are having a very journey of I was trying to tell you that what is the gamut of the ancient Indian science and technology we are having and we have learnt that we are having a lot of stuffs and lot of uh, you know technologies still existing in some pockets and those thing has to be also renovated has to be maintained properly for that we need to learn and also we need to look at the philosophy of the indian science and technology which was unique because it was integrated with the mother nature and not mechanized that way that it will spoil the mind of a person. Today, you people are using all electronic gas gates and then uh, what you call your all those things getting engaged and you are spoiling your mind. Your intellectuality will not be blossomed unless you have a peace of mind and a very tranquility in that. So, we need to have a technology and I must tell you that we need to go back a technology which is need not to be automated unless otherwise required like for your blast furnace or some other places where man cannot go you can have robots and do that. But rest of the things we need to have technology which will generate more jobs more mechanical and it will so that mind and body and the spirit will be in balance. So, that is the basic philosophy of ancient technology and it should be integrated with the modern with the mother nature. So, that we live a very fruitful and productive and enjoyable life on this earth and make this earth a beautiful place. Thank you very much for listening to me and that is the essence of the philosophy of ancient technology what I am trying to propagate. Thank you very much.